Fernando had been on the road, Ron and Fernando had been on the road with me for about three or four years. Um, and I was coming to want to get off the road and retire a little bit. Uh, Fernando really stepped up. And over the last five years, I've seen Fernando as a human being, as a teacher, but also as a human being, just grow into such power and share his passion and love in such a beautiful way that he's inspiring people and keeping that flame going. So, for part two of his presentation on how to be a better practitioner, and it should also be the emulation of being a better person because you're such a beautiful guy, um, Fernando Crespo O'Neill. Thank you. Hey, welcome everybody. Hope everyone had a good lunch. Now, what I want to do is, uh, just so I can make sure we're all ready, I'm uh, really good at, at mushifying people's brains. So uh, I know some of you with headphones, the, the interpreter's probably going, what does he mean? So I hope your brains are kind of mushy after my, uh, my two hours. So what I want to do is invite everybody to get up. Come on, everybody, let's stretch. Shake your arms, smile. Hug the person next to you, boogie a little bit. I want that blood pumping. I want your focus. So uh, your brains won't be mush. I mean, your bodies won't be mush, just your brains. <laughs> uh. <laughs> OK, thank you. There you go. If you guys want to do the hugs, too, go ahead. So a little bit about me is uh, About, about half of you weren't here for my presentation on Wednesday, and there were so many questions as the content was going that I only got through about half of my presentation. So unfortunately, you know, uh, Geert was gonna be up here, but he's got uh, some other uh, things going on in life, so I, I stepped in to help out. And, and, uh, but I wanted to let you guys know something. Wednesday turned from an informal training day to a full training day. So a lot of you hadn't come in that day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record my whole presentation and you guys will get, get a copy of that. So I hope, and uh, what's gonna happen is, is after the conference is over, Mandalay will be sending you all emails with a Dropbox download and I'll try to make sure my video's in there. Just, I gotta get back to, Mich to Calif uh, Michigan. So a little bit about me. Oh, this is my name. I'm half Mexican, so I'm sorry I talk really fast. So feel free to ask me to slow down, which I had to do a lot on Wednesday. So I'll do my best to not talk so fast. Uh, but I've been a, a, I'm a certified biofeedback diplomate. I've been supporting you guys, the practitioners, since 2007. Um, I've been around alternative health for a very long time. Uh, this year is my 30th year of doing massage. I've been doing uh, cranial sacral for 18 years. I've also supported, been supporting biofeedback webinars since, for 10 years now. Uh, and me personally, in the last four or five years, I've taught over 1,100 live hours of training content. So it's just, I, I love what I do. I love working with you guys. My goal is to help every practitioner be a beacon of light in their community. Because this world kind of is toxic right now. So uh, one of the webinars I did was last year was called Heal the World. I was getting so frustrated with all of the shootings and killings and then we had that big massacre in Las Vegas, which was just senseless. So uh, on our website at sstoffice.com, we have a lot of uh, training webinars, 30, 39 paid webinars, and then we have a lot, hundreds of free webinars for our members. So I just want to let you know that there is that available. I find what makes me a good trainer is that I try to be the best practitioner I can be. I support my clients out of two offices. I use biofeedback, LED light therapy, massage, craniosacral foot spa and oils and nutrition, as well as cold wave lasers and coaching. When people ask me what I do, I say I'm a wellness coach. I am a, I'm the fluffy wellness coach. So. And, and, and this, I've been here to learn too, so 
it's been really enjoyable being here these, these last couple days, and I really am glad that uh, Mandalay invited me. So I'm going to show everybody that wasn't here on Wednesday how to add things to Disease Dictionary. So this is a Kodak moment time. Feel free to take a picture at the top of the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to add anger release to Disease Dictionary. I find uh, that I see a lot in my clients, they're dealing with chronic inflammation, and one of the signs of chronic inflammation is anger. We see, I see that in the software all the time. So, you guys ready to see how to add to Disease Dictionary? I'll go back, hold on. So here we are, Disease Dictionary. You're going to just right click anywhere in the white and then left click add new name. I think Alex showed this a day or two ago, but I want to make sure you guys have this nice and clear. So add new name and then we'll call this anger release. I just did this the other day, so I'll call this number two. Oh, actually, I'll just call this mega zap. <laughs> And then do you want to save the name? Yes. So now it's highlighted and I like to do electroacupuncture and then I always mute the music. Some of you have probably noticed, uh, Alex talked about this yesterday, that if, if you don't have your sound turned down, then uh, Mozart starts playing really loud. And if you try to reduce your volume when that happens, it actually locks up your computer. Disease Dictionary is a really powerful program, so I always mute the music here. So we're going to click OK Reveal Text, and look at that. We have a white canvas. So let's go and grab this zap. And so I copied, and we're going to do paste. Now, some people have asked me, Fernando, can I just... Does it have to be all one line or should I make sure it all shows up on the same screen? And no, you want it to be all one line. So the way, how it's set up like here. Uh -huh. the no I, I went through the whole matrix and created a, a whole zap on everything for releasing anger. And so that's where all those codes came from. And so, since you brought it up, I'll, what, what it, I don't normally show you guys my spreadsheets. And since this isn't one of my events, you guys, on Wednesday, there was a lot of excitement about my spreadsheets. So here's one right here for all, I've made 73 custom disease dictionaries apps. And so I had a lot of people ask me the, over the last couple of days, would I be interested in selling that? And it, it, it was a lot of, thinking and thinking on it, and I, and I, I will. Um, I've got over 70 hours into that, and so at my rate, that's over $5,000. I'm not gonna charge you guys $5,000, but I would charge, uh, if you guys, if whoever bought it from me promised not to share it, I would sell it to you for $100 US. So I can take foreign, euro, or uh, US, or credit card. The only trick is, is you have to have Microsoft Excel on your computer. So if you don't have Microsoft Excel, then I could switch it to like OpenOffice, which is a free version, but that allows you to copy and paste. Since, since anything we add to Disease Dictionary isn't, you, you can't back it up, so you have to have a spreadsheet as your backup. So, okay, let's move on. Got a long way to go. So we added all the numbers in there. Every one of them's got a double space between them. Go back to edit and we're gonna click save. And now we have anger release in the matrix, uh, in the disease dictionary. So that's how you can have fun and get that running. And uh, so I hope you guys like it because I have found, at least in the United States, a lot of my clients are, their wellness is holding them back, or is not at its best because they're always angry about something. You know, our, I see chronic client, clients dealing with chronic stress, chronic inflammation. Uh, I know, you, I, from what I've seen, you guys are a lot healthier here in Europe, but in, in America, the diet is, is perfect for 
uh, chronic inflammation. And so look, let's keep going and have some fun. Any questions on adding to disease dictionary? You're all experts now, right? <clears throat> so another, so part of my presentation that some of you didn't hear on Wednesday is I want to show you guys a lot of the tricks in the software where you can find little messages about what's going on with your client. Uh, Gail showed you guys the one I really like that's in the sports program, and it was fun to hear you guys want to know where that was because uh, there's usually some really good messages in there. And then Gail also showed you the DGENs. On, in the DGENs sort of C-scans, there's lots of great messages in there about our clients. So here's a couple of screenshots of people that, that I've worked on, and I've been seeing some new interesting ones lately. But existence or starving to death conflict? How about total giving up, I wish I were dead? Unable to transport the morsel through the intestine. And then self-devaluation conflict. Those are just four examples of ones I see. I've got lots and lots of screenshots of different clients. But these DGENs, opening them up and seeing, of, you know, this can give you some insight into what's going on with your client. Now, the who here is already open using the DGENs, the C-scans? Is anyone doing that already? Good. Would you all like to learn how to do it? So you were seeing it. You can open up DGENs in multiple places. However, the trick is, is every panel has its own algorithm. So it's very important if you're going to open up certain panels, like the DGENs, is to open them up in the right place. So my favorite place to open up the DGENs is when I'm setting up Orgone Generator. Now one of the things that I was talking about with somebody at the break yesterday or the day before is, is adding extra people to a session. Does anybody here work on your whole family at the same time? Do you work on 10, 20, 30 people in the same session at one time? Okay, so here's where you do that. So I, I have a, a message I already put in the Orgone Generator. You come up here to Phaser X, and then you can do Add More Patients to Subspace Session. And you see over in the white box all the names I put? So that's all my family and, and people I care about over there on the side. So Phaser X, and choice number two is Add More Patients to Session. Yes, Charlotte? Yes, one small question. Uh, some people do the birthday, some people don't do it. Do you think it's, it's a must? I don't, uh, so the, Charlotte asked, do some people put the birth dates in there? I don't do that. I have found that it's not necessary. And do you have to treat those persons first in your, you have to have them in your system once, or do you just have them in your system there? So the other question was, have, have, have these been existing clients before? And uh, have, are they already in my system? And no, I have found that that's not, cert, not necessary as long as I have their permission. I am a big stickler. I do not work on anybody unless I have their permission. Uh, uh, as long as they sign my consent form from, uh, for that first appointment to, to me, that means I've got their permission to run the sessions on them. Say that again. Oh, so, well, do, we, do I mention in there if they're pregnant or not? I, on, I actually don't work on anybody if they're pregnant. The, the manual says do not work on people that are pregnant. And if, uh, unless you have a license to work on someone that's pregnant, then you're allowed to, but I don't have a license to work on pregnant women. I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, so I, I try to be careful. Uh, okay, so, and uh, you guys saw a lot of pictures up there, you know, not a name, so please don't work on any of those people. <laughs> uh, so, after you add people in there, if, if you don't want to let your client see, you can just click hide, and you can see how it went away, and then activate it. So, here to open up your DGENs, you click on Phaser X, and then access the Quest 9 or Skia or Reductor or Indigo degenerations. 
Now down here at the bottom, just know you got four choices. One, two, three, four. One are the gentlest, four are the deepest. So I'm working on me. I'm going to go ahead and click on four. Okay, okay. Now you, what you're going to do is you're going to click start and then start opening up. Well, depending on your software, it may say C scan or it may say DGEN. I'm going to click C scan and then enter, enter. And then I'm going to go over to the, the indigo or the working box. I pressed it and C scan again, again. You see, I see what I'm doing. So what I'm, the, that box pops up on top. So I'm going over here and clicking on that to make it go away and clicking C scan, C scan again. Yes. Okay. For most of my clients, I open this up eight times. Or sometimes I play a game. When I'm working on me, I try to see how many I can open up. And then sometimes it'll give you the message when you're done and you get the insufficient memory. So for me today, my, my most was six. So I'll go click OK. And then I'm waiting for while rectification gets to 100 before I click end. No. So the question was, can you open up Body Viewer, Iridology, Disease Dictionary, and all those DGENs with 18 gig of RAM or 16 gig of RAM? Absolutely. I, I will admit, I am very much a go big or go home practitioner. I've opened up 65 C scans. I do not recommend that. Uh, I, of those 65, I acted, activated 48 of them. And I will tell you, don't do that. Uh, I had very serious rage issues for about three days. I, I warned Ron, I go, buddy, you know, Ron's my best friend. He's my brother from another mother. Uh, if I'm talking to my mom on the phone and she knows Ron's nearby, she says, tell Ronnie I love him. Uh, but I warned him when I activated 48 of them. I go, dude, I don't know what's going to happen. There's probably going to be an emotional detox. If you wake up in the hotel room and I'm standing over you with the leg of the kitchen table, don't take it personal. Ron's still alive, so that didn't happen. So did someone say they wanted me to, to show again how to do that? Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, I'm kind of stuck because I already hit, I already got the, the insufficient memory. So, let me, right there. I'm sorry, what, Mary? Well, so the question is, are these working? No, they're not working because I haven't activated them yet. So we actually haven't got them running yet. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, yes, Kathleen. Well, uh, so the question is, so I, I, made the, I made the comment about how it does matter where you open up your C scans from. So just because you have the C scan button in your working box the whole session, you technically should not be clicking on the C scans unless you've clicked start in here. Because start now you've, because right now we're doing the Dr. Hammer part of the software, the new, the German new medicine panel. So. Uh, you know, because you can, you can open up AFE pulses in NLP, in nutrition, in aging, in covert thought patterns. There's always places to open up AFE pulses. However, in this particular one here at the Phase Rex, this one is geared towards cancer and towards the serious stuff. So does that make sense, Kathleen? They're geared towards their own panels. So like when you're in NLP and you do the brain scan, that is really much geared, the algorithm is geared towards the brain. And the other, uh, but you open up the C scan there because you click start. You know, so that, you, know, you got it going, or technically you don't click start there. But okay, let's keep going. So as a recommendation, coming into these DGENs, I don't always do this with new clients. The reason why? is you don't click end until it gets to 100. And for me, I get, when I run this on myself and I'm strapped up, I get to 100 in about 30 seconds or less. Because I don't have cancer. I don't have, 
uh, you know, I don't have something that serious, but there's the emotional stuff, you know, but which you guys are going to see in a minute. I'll show that to you. But, uh, but it'll, I can get to it kind of quick. So as a recommendation, I'm going to show you guys a lot of the AFE pulses, which number one, body viewer has to be open on your computer for the AFE pulses to work. Some of you have called us wondering why the AFE pulses aren't working. And I'll go, is your body viewer open? Oh, no, it's not. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's number one. So make sure it's open for those AFE pulses. But number two, you saw when I clicked on number four, it made me click OK twice. How many of you have seen it where you click OK twice? Nothing happens. You click OK twice again. Nothing happens. You click twi OK twice. You see that? That's because that's the software protecting the client. The software says they can't run, let you run this on them right now. Here's the dilemma. It ties up your main software, your main conscious panel. And it's not that the computer's locked up. You're, you can go run disease dictionary, body view, and iridology, no problem. But your main panel's now locked up because you chose to try to run a DGEN on them. So just be mindful. If someone comes to you with something really serious, I, I usually do, I try to do about four sessions first before I'll try to come into DGENs so that I don't get stuck waiting and waiting for the main conscious panel to become available to me. It's not locked up, it's just protecting them until something else gets done in body viewer, iridology, and disease dictionary. Okay, did I hit 100 yet? Look at that, okay. So we'll click 100, or click end. And then what's so nice with the Mandalay software, you don't have to wait 10 seconds anymore. But for those of you that still have other versions of the software that says wait 10 seconds, I will tell you, count really slow in your head to 10 seconds. Because some of you have called us, or tech support, and you're getting really, you, you started clicking close before the 10 seconds, and it puts you into a half hour loop of trying to close it. And it was just because you were impatient. So, yeah, so right here I got six. So to set these up, we're gonna do result cancer scan. Then I do add additional info. And then my big thing is I copied the string of choices from risk profile. And then I'm going to put that here under risk. All of you with a Microsoft Windows computer, you all have a notepad program. Whether notepad, wordpad, or, or some of you that have office, you'll have word. And I use that like crazy for taking notes during the session. Then I'm going to do focus and item loaded, emotional release, detox, and check effects of radiation. How many of you have seen in risk profile in the top five of the reds, or even in the top three of the reds is radiation? A lot of our clients live with their cell phones, always in their pocket, in their bra, on their nightstand, and they don't have, EM radiation is, is, is not going anywhere unless you choose to live up in the mountains somewhere away from Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is going to be keep getting much worse. And then uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. The other day. Uh, in the U.S., we are, many of our electrical companies put smart meters on people's homes and businesses. Do you have smart meters here in Europe? Those things are so deadly. They, they use a cellular technology, and many people have noticed that their health and their wellness has diminished when a smart meter was put on their home. However, some people live in an apartment building or in a condo complex where they don't have an option for those not to be on their home. So as a recommendation, if people can't get away from those, uh, in the United States and an, or on Amazon, they sell EM radiation blocking paint, where you can literally paint the inside wall of your home where those meters are to protect you guys and protect your clients. Some people have, yeah, there's many different things that you can do. I, one of our practitioners in, the, in Canada, uh, 
Oh, for where she lives, there's uh, 20 smart meters right outside of her condo. And she, her health has been going down. Okay, so that's why I pick radiation. Yes? When you have the smart meter turned off, which in the Netherlands, for example, they had it turned off, is it still uh, working? If the smart meter is turned off, I actually don't know on that one. So she's asking, she's saying in the Netherlands, you can have the smart part or the smart part of the smart meter turned off. So now it's just a dumb meter. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not. You'd have to. You, you can actually order on Amazon EM radiation uh, handheld meters to go around and check stuff. Uh, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, once you get within three feet or away from these, their power starts to diminish. But I know that they still cause problems. Okay, guys, we got to move along. I'm going to click load and OK. So in this particular one, we see existence or starving to death conflict. Then over here, hold on, I, I know I, you guys are going to get mad at me. Here's another starving to death conflict. Here's a light self-devaluation conflict. This one's a fun one. When I see that come up with certain clients, I've no, I, Sometimes their people are really hard on themselves, so much so that they actually, they beat themselves up mentally and emotionally, and they actually diminish their wellness doing that. For me, personally, I, what I like to do when I open up so many is I like to go back and forth between the result cancer and result emotion. However, you have to click cancer first for the treat button to turn on, and then I'll do emotion next. Now, how many of you have clicked on those and you get the pop-up that says no lock on scan? You hit result, you hit result emotion, result scan, cancer first, no matter what in all of these. But for half of them, I, the, I'll do, secondly, I'll do result emotion. Because I want to get both sides with this, this. These panels are so cool, we'll get different results. And so for this one, you can see down here, indigestible anger. Well, yes, right, see how it says right here, indigestible anger? So for those of you that follow me on social media, uh, a lot of you saw that I was cutting a lot of wood this year. Uh, we, uh, we, we were, I was working with... Uh, cutting with chainsaw and with a splitter wood that was about this big. And I had asked a lot of people for help one weekend and only two people showed up. And I was really disappointed because the other ones I thought were gonna show up because I gave them a lot of notice. So after four weeks of me splitting wood, my back went out. And I went to the chiropractor five times and my back wasn't getting better. I went for a massage, my back wasn't getting better. So I'm like, okay, I better strap up and see what's going on. So I strapped up and I ran about six or eight degens and anger, 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 anger kept coming up. What I, the reason why I open up so many is I wanna see duplication. I wanna see repetition. Because if I see anger four out of the six times, well then I, that allows me to give my client homework and insight into what's going on. So after the session was done, I was like, I'm not angry at them. I'm disappointed, but apparently I was angry at the situation. So I said a prayer, and I said out loud, I forgive them, I'm not angry at them anymore, and within two hours, all my back pain was gone. I got home, and I'm like, I had, I had warned my son, my youngest son, Jaden. I go, if, when I get home, if you see me doing really good, you need to tell me to take it easy. One of the biggest things I see with my clients, and maybe you've seen it too, is if our client has been sick for a really long time and they come to you for a session and you have the most magical session ever and they feel so good the next day, what's usually the first thing they wanna do? They wanna clean their house. They wanna do all this stuff and all this energy that their body needed for healing, they just invested it in their home and now they're sick again for another four to six weeks. So I told Jaden, I go, Jaden, when I get home, if you see me going crazy with energy, say, Dad, come on, we talked about this. 
slow it down. So I got home and I was feeling good, so I wanted to mow the yard, but I, I do a riding lawn mower because we have a lot of moles. And I did, used to do the walking, but then I kept twisting my ankles. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm riding from now on. So he's like, Dad, are you gonna sure? I go, Jaden, I'm very aware of what's going on right now. You know, I go, thank you for looking out for me. I did the riding lawn mower and then I jumped in the pool. And then uh, did a couple other light, light things and then jumped in the pool, kept stretching out and taking it easy. So <clears throat> let's fast forward a couple months. So my back pain went away. I had never had my back really lock up like that on me. Now all summer, another problem I kept having where my heels kept going out. I didn't know your heel could go out. I kept going to my chiropractor and they were adjusting my heels. And I didn't understand why I was going out. So fast forward to the first weekend in, in September, I had told my family, I go, we have about eight hours of wood splitting left, but we're getting it done this weekend. I'm not forcing all of you guys to do it, but I am gonna do the wood splitting. What happened was I, I pulled the log splitter out to the, to the driveway. I have a big uh, pop-up gazebo so that I'm not splitting wood in the sun. So I, that, that was protecting me. And, and I could barely walk. I mean, I, I, was, I was walking like this, pulling the wood splitter out, and my 18-year-old came out. He's all, Dad, he was so mad at me. He said, why are you, forced, why are you killing yourself? I go, Jaden, trust me, I'm working through something here right now, just let me do this. So, I mean, I, I couldn't even stand up straight, and some of this wood was super heavy and big, and we, we, got, we started splitting the wood. I started myself, I was gonna do it, and I, could, and I couldn't even stand up straight. So, after I got into it, I, I was starting to feel a bit better, but I wasn't gonna stop. About an hour and a half in, it was getting so hot and sunny, he's like, can we take a break? I go, Jaden, if you wanna take a break, that's fine but we've only got about a half hour left, I'm gonna continue. As soon as I was done splitting the last pit of wood, all my ankle pain went away. So I ran a session on myself and was kind of going through uh, the different messages we get in the software and abandonment and abandonment and abandonment had kept coming up. So earlier that summer, I'd, my anger had made my back go out but all this work, doing the work by myself, and all these people that didn't come and help me, may, had made me apparently feel abandoned. And it was causing my own wellness not being at, at its best. So these little messages we get in here are huge for us. Because uh, Gail said earlier about her mother-in-law having her shoulder being out when she couldn't get her hand higher than this. So what was the problem? Well, our shoulders are our shooters. I should have done this, and I should have done that. If your clients have shoulder pain, what are they, what are they shooting themselves? So don't shoot on yourself. So think about the different emotional things that can be crushing our physicalness. So I love the DGENs. For some of you, you saw that message after six. I got the message insufficient memory and it wouldn't let me go on. Some of you may get that message after opening up one. So just take the one and know that you can eventually get more later as you work on this client and help see where their, their wellness goes. Yes, Timur. Do we need to prepare the That's actually a really good question. I get the C-scans opened up. So his question was, do we need to prepare the body before doing the, the C-scans? I try to open up the C-scans early in the session, but I don't, um, okay, let me back up a little bit. One of the things, one of the webinars that I have taught is called the Seriously Smart Startup, and it's how I run a session from start to finish. And in that, in that session, in, in the way that webinar, uh, you'll see it's four pages, how I do things. And it's not a protocol, they're just things I do to open up so that the serious stuff actually works and the, and the changes that we wanna do actually can happen. Way too many people, I, I find skip steps and or do things in a weird order. So uh, the order I've come up with is because of doing the follow-ups of my clients and seeing how they slept and how they felt the next day. Uh, you know, Ron, his, when he was a practitioner or started out, when he, he didn't do follow-ups with his, with his clients. And he would go down to Ohio once a month to work on his mom and his sisters. And after several months, he found out that his sisters always had to take work off a couple days after his sessions on them. He just 
crushed them. You know, he overcooked them in a session. And so if you, if you need to do these follow-ups within 24 hours, 48 hours of the session to find out if you overcooked them, if you did too much. So where I am very much a go big or go home kind of practitioner, I will tone it down depending on clients. So in the Seriously Smart startup, on the very first page, I open all these up, but I don't activate them and run them until the middle of page three, because I want all their channels of elimination opened up, all, you know, so that they're as effective and as, as we want them to be. So thanks for asking that. So up here, you have, a, you have an opportunity as, what, as far as what the timer that you want to put. You can go for a maximum of 45 minutes, which is what I usually do. Unless I'm working on someone that I, that I consider elderly, they're not old, they're not elderly, they're, I call them elderly. Uh, and I will tone it down to be between seven and 10 minutes. And, and so the, the goal is, is after you run it, you want the message to be uh, corrected. Not, not in balance, you want it to be corrected. So don't, I, when it's done, I don't pay attention to the rectification number, I pay attention to if it's corrected or imbalanced. So that's how I do that. Any questions before we go back to the PowerPoint? So the question is, is, in, can, is there a way to do opening them all up on the same screen? And it all depends, it, the, it, it's not really a Windows 10, it's on the resolution. Some of you are able to buy a, a computer with a 4K screen, and a 4K screen will let you shrink things down and have it all on one screen. However, the font is so small, you, I, I, I couldn't even read anything. I will tell you, me, what I recommend is every practitioner has two screens. Um, I, I have my main 17 inch screen, and then I have two 24 inch screens connected to it. So when I'm running a session, the consciousness panel is on my main screen, and then over on my second screen, I have body viewer, iridology, and disease dictionary. On, so body viewer takes up the whole screen, Iridology takes up this much of the screen and body viewer takes up this much. Did I say body viewer? I meant disease dictionary. So, because the reason why I do that is body viewer locks up a lot. When, when, even when you set up body viewer properly, it will lock up and you can tell that it, it's not running because extra piggyback active has stopped blinking. If extra piggyback active has stopped blinking, body viewer is not doing anything. Then iridology, that's a simple, program, you get it running and leave it, let it run for a whole session. But with disease dictionary, when disease dictionary is on top and it, then it disappears and hides behind the other ones, I know that, that the timer's up, that the zap is done. I saw this on, on Facebook. This has been a kind of a question that's coming up a lot. When, when you guys are running, hold on, let me do this. When you're running a session, does disease dictionary, <coughs> What will happen is down here, when you're running a session and you highlight over disease dictionary, when the zap is running, it should say not responding. When, when disease dictionary is actually working, it should say not responding. I, I, I see pe people call us all the time, they think disease dictionary has locked up. If it says not responding, it's running. Now what's nice is throughout the program, have you guys noticed that the timers aren't always telling the truth. The timer's set to three and it runs for 20 minutes. I call that Nelsonian time. <laughs> so, but in disease dictionary, it's real time. If it says six minutes or 20 minutes, it runs exactly for that time and stops. But I don't know about you, but for me, a lot of my clients have been causing alarms in disease dictionary. So you, there's the alarm response pop-up. And I've been seeing the pop-up happen before it gets to the end of the timer, you click OK and then it's rectified. It's kind of letting you know ahead of time, hey, it, it's done. You know, so, yeah, so anyways, look at that. So you see how disease dictionary is hiding? That's, I, that's why I recommend every practitioner use two screens. That way you, I, I want to see everything that's running at the same time. I don't want to have only consciousness up and then have to go check on the other ones because what if disease dictionary has been done for 20 minutes? What if body viewer locked up a half hour ago and I didn't go look and check? So that's why I like doing the multiple screens. 
The, I know the computers we build, uh, we can have three screens going. And so, okay, let's get out of here because I'm going to take you somewhere else really fun. As far as, uh, I I'm going to try to make sure to get these handouts over to Aboya and Andrew. This is a great emotions chart from Louise Hay. I definitely recommend that you have this printed out in your office so that your, when, if your clients come in complaining about chronic pain, show them this handout and go, what do you think about this? Like people that have chronic knee pain, stubborn pride and ego, inability to bend, fear and flexibility, they want to give in. What about arthritis? You're probably the most one, the one I've gotten for the most trouble on. You guys want to take pictures, you're going to get this as a download so you can actually read it. But the worst one, please no one here get mad at me. This isn't my document. But down here where it says sciatica. I'm, I'm not going to ask if anyone here has sciatica pain because you'll be mad at me when I tell you what it says. It says being hypocritical, fear of money and or the future. Generally, when there's pain in this area, it can, be, it can be financially caused, stressing out about money, but it can also be because if they're a hypocritical person. So I love this document as far as getting to the reason why our clients come in, what's maybe causing their chronic pain issues. We actually just did a, a big webinar um, back in September called Emotions, the Architects of Our Disease. For those of you that are buying webinars from us, you will not find that one. That was a live only webinar because we went so deep into certain things, like some of the, the true causes of depression, the true causes of Lyme, the true causes of cancer. I couldn't, we couldn't make that a recording. So if, if all of you guys sign up for our newsletter for next year, we'll do that again. It'll be a live only broadcast and I, and you have to watch it live and be available. So, uh, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, we covered the front of the body with that one. Okay, let's get back. Now, my, one of my other favorite panels in the software is dental. Who likes to use the dental panel? So, who doesn't use the dental panel because it's hard and confusing? Okay, okay. So I love the dental panel. Uh, I did a whole webinar a couple years ago on just the dental panel. I'm not an expert on the whole dental panel, and I must make a disclaimer right now. <clears throat> the dental panel was made to be used by dentists. However, if you go to a training event where a nice guy teaches you how to use it, then... So when it comes to using the dental panel, how about I just show you? Program. Oh, really quick, before I do this. I mentioned earlier about how all the panels have an algorithm. So it's really easy to go back to the main panel, click on program, and click on dental. But it's so much more fun if you do program to time cybernetic super learning and go to dental from here. or go program to spinal into dental. The reason why I recommend doing that, and this is a conditional comment, the more panels that you can have opened, it creates a stack up in the program and the algorithm gets longer and the sessions are more intense. But if you're working on somebody that can't handle an intense session, We'll go the simple way and go from programs to dental and do that. But if you can take the scenic route to get to a panel, the zap will be more intense. The algorithm will be much longer. Okay, so when we're in here, number one, you click on information. The choice number one, you do start info exchange. That's it, start info exchange. Number two, you click on information again and come down here and do test Clifford report. Okay, Cho 
number, step number three, up to information, and we're gonna click current Clifford results. Current Clifford results. Which I must have missed. You, see, I knew something was act, up, some, hold on. Something is acting weird in this program. Okay, so now, okay, after, you know what, I know what I was doing wrong. I was being a dork. Number four, search for foci. <coughs> search for foci. And so you come in here, and then there's the picture. You just gotta click on the picture twice, and it goes away. And now we're gonna click on teeth chart. Well, bam. So when you come in a teeth chart, it looks like this. Now normally what I prefer to do is I only do one, I check one filter at a time. That's what I prefer to do. Just check one filter and do test and treat. Now, dental can take a while, so I'm gonna show you two tricks after this. So when it comes back, everything's in red. Don't freak out. You can do remove red, and what you're looking for is all the teeth that are over 100. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so under the infection search, we brought back a lot that over 100. One of my clients has had 14 root canals. So the first time I worked in this panel on him, I had to look at all the teeth that were over 200. So just be mindful when you're talking with your clients, when you're gonna come in here, you may, don't be shocked if you see some really high numbers. Because I know you, none of you are gonna put on your consent form how many root canals have you had. You know, we have on there the SOC question, how many teeth have you had removed? How many fillings do you have? But you generally don't ask how many root canals that you've had done. So he had 14, so, I, so that made me use this panel a little bit differently. So what I, what I like to do is all of your computers, yes, Kathleen, okay. So the question is, is when you're looking at this, are you looking at the mouth or are you looking from the back of the head forward? You're looking at the mouth. So, so yeah, top right, top left, and then bottom, bottom. So you know what, I get that question so much, Kathleen, so don't stress out. That's a very common question. Huh? Okay, so everybody, all, on you, all of you on your computer, you have the Microsoft snipping tool. Unless you have Microsoft XP, and then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> so what, what I like to do is we put in our computer snipping tool down here. You click new, and then I like to take a picture or a snip of, of that. So I'm gonna just call this D number one. And what, I, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do these one at a time and take a snip to find out which of the five filters was, was gonna be the most effective one for me to work on. This is a big deal. And one of the other documents I'm gonna give you guys is this document right here. And it's called the Tooth Organ Meridian Chart. It's from a doctor in St. Louis, uh, Missouri, Dr. Simon Yu, where he spells out what each tooth is connected to. I had a practitioner I was working with in Portland, Oregon a couple years ago that her doctor wanted her to start taking uh, thyroid medication at 69 years old. He said, your thyroid's not working right, your thyroid's not working right, and he wouldn't, he was trying to force her to start taking thyroid medication. medication. So m most of my customers are you guys. I rem well, you guys book appointments with me, you strap up to your computer, to your device, 
I remote into your computer and I run sessions on you like I'm right there in the room with you. It's not subspace because you're strapped up. So, so I get to work with a lot of practitioners all over the world doing this. And, and so we ran a session and we were able to prove that her thyroid was fine. But one of her molars had, had a, a imbalance in it. We, we did the zap on her molar and all of her thyroid problems went away. So the, to me, the dental panel is one of the best tools we have in the whole program. So you're gonna get this as, as, a, as a document to, have print, uh, to print out. So right here, remove red. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So again, doing, the, doing a snippet here like that. And again, I would just, we'll just call this on the desktop D number two. And I, this is what I do. I'll go through each one of them in a row and find out which of the filters needs the most work. And that's what I do for that session. Here's the problem, you guys. I'll only do about five or six teeth in one session. And it's more intense if you have the dental bite in their mouth or the caress kit, or even just the face fail over their face, and you can work on the teeth through the face besides the harness. It makes the whole session more effective. I only do about five or six teeth at a time, because if you do too much, they can have a strong emotional detox. Here's an example. We had a, we had a very successful practitioner in Michigan. Uh, she decided to do eight teeth at one time in subspace. She was doing a session herself, did eight teeth at one time. The very next day she woke up barely able to control herself. She wanted to kill her husband in bed with her before he woke up. She, she was shaking in bed. She prayed and the feeling went away. He woke up, she told him what happened. He was really grateful that she didn't kill him. And then he let her upgrade her skio to the indigo. So I have seen this happen with different practitioners where you get really excited about this, this panel. And I, I, I am not a less is more kind of practitioner. I'm more is more. <laughs> but when it comes to this panel, I tone it down. And it, whether you're doing subspace or strapped up, I do about five, six teeth at a time. So here we see quite a few teeth. And, and if, and if you want to, you're like, okay, well, which, what are the important teeth to work on for this appointment? So to do that is you start clicking the button, red add five. And just keep clicking the button, red add five, until it gets down to the amount of teeth that you want. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna stop right there. So here's what you do. I would tell you to do a screenshot of this so you can have it you know, for yourself. And then just double click on the name. When you do red add five, it's awesome. The reason why is each tooth will rectify in one click. If you don't do the red add five and you just go and you pick the teeth you want, they could take five to six clicks before they rectify. So it's about a one minute zap, but it gets, this is a neat way to, to get done much quicker, if, especially if you don't have a lot of time. Now here's a trick that I learned from the most successful practitioner I know in the United States. She makes the kind of money that all of you would wish you all made as a practitioner. And uh, they actually run a clinic that have about four devices running at all time. I was talking to her a couple years ago about being, how I, I go, you know, sometimes I do between five to 10 sessions a day, and she does about 16. And I go, I go, how do you keep from getting bored though? And so she told me the story of uh, one of her clients that has uh, 209, 209 confirmed personalities. So that when she's doing a session, say you're in virtual doctor, she said the virtual doctor will all of a sudden go start calibrating again 
and all the results will change right in front of her. She didn't even click on anything. And so she's like, okay, who am I talking to now? So this lady's in her, the, her client's in her late 30s uh, and has had a very traumatic life. Uh, so uh, that was really interesting. And I, I have lots of interesting clients too. That, that I haven't had one like that yet. So what she told me, what she likes to do, because seeing, having 16 uh, sessions in a day, every minute counts for her. So what she likes to do is she will actually check all of them at once, do the test and treat, and then do the red add five. So that way you're getting the most important teeth, period, with all the five filters. I've actually started doing that, and it's been pretty cool. So I thought I'd point that out. Okay, so here we go. The zap is done. So you're treating all of those no, we only clicked on canine. That's the tooth, the tooth I clicked, clicked on. We're doing them one at a time. When you do red at five, it makes, it, it high, the reason why we do red at five, so it shows you the most important teeth you should get done in that session. But, but, but you still gotta click each teeth, each tooth that's left in red to do them. So is there a risk of their fillings coming out? I haven't had that happen, but I've heard of that happening to other people. Uh, but but in, my, in my webinar and using this panel, there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of things in here I don't teach, because I'm not a dentist, but you, you can, there's, in here you can reposition the jaw, and you can do lots of different things. So I don't do that, so I, don't, I haven't had anybody lose any fillings yet. Yes, but you have a root channel uh, treatment. I believe it's a dead body in your heart, so how do you see that? So there's a root channel. I actually haven't used the root channel treatment, so... No, no, no. Is there underneath the root channel uh, treatment, underneath the teeth? So what, you're working on the tooth and, and the socket? When they already have that. Oh, oh, from the root. The, yeah, so, that's like a dead body in your, in your mouth. So, it's really harmful for your system. Can you solve that problem with this treatment? I, so, so, what if they've had a root canal, there's no longer a tooth there, and you're doing the zap? It actually will work completely in that whole socket into the jaw, into the bone. Because sometimes the people have gone, why is that tooth red? There's not even a tooth there anymore, and, but there's something in the socket. There's actually a biological dentist that some of us know outside of Toronto, and he did a 25-year study tying the majority of breast cancers to poorly done root canals because they didn't get the whole infection out before they closed out the surgery. So, okay, we gotta move along, guys. I wanna get out of here because you're all experts now in this panel. One last thing to make you an expert in here, though. When the zap is done, and canines are really important teeth. Canines are also called the eye teeth. The, the canine teeth, all four of them, are connected to the eyes. So sometimes if you're having vision problems, eye problems, it could be your eye teeth. The eye teeth are also connected to the liver. So keep that in mind. Which is funny because lately I've been feeling like I need glasses. And all four of them are coming up. Okay, final trick in the dental panel before I go to TMJ. When you're in the dental panel, you do not go by this rectification up here. You go by the one that's hidden down here in the dark. So keep that in mind. So right down here in red where it says rectified 100, that's the one you go by. Have fun with the dental panel, you guys. I hope you guys are so much more effective in kicking the wellness out, you know, making it so much better in your clients. Because uh, to just know that there's just dysfunction in the jaw and the mouth and the sockets and the teeth, and that, that, that their lives can be so much better if you just spend some time in here. Okay, now before I leave here, go up, come up to TMJ. I'm sorry, no. Uh, hold on. 
search for foci. Then I click on the TMJ scan right here. To me, the TMJ panel here, to me, this is digital cranial sacral. I love, love, love this. I do this panel right here for three reasons. One, after I've worked on the teeth in the dental panel. Two, after spending time in the NLP panel, doing anything emotional. And then number three, if someone comes to me with migraines or headaches, I just come in here and generally that resolves. Uh, so those are the three big the reasons why I come in here. So TMJ, I'm gonna click on scan total. Emotional stuff and headaches, migraines. Headaches slash migraines. And just work, so working on the teeth. So number one was, if, I'm, if I just was working on in the tooth chart, number two was for anything after the emotional stuff. You guys are hitting me up with a lot of questions and I'm probably not gonna finish my PowerPoint. But before I forget, I wanna make sure to make this comment. I said this on Wednesday. If I may, the reason why we're coming in here, especially after working on emotional stuff, because this is great for, to me, this is great for peeling the emotional onion that is our head. And if you spend more than 10 minutes in the NLP panel, here's my big recommendation. If I'm in the NLP panel longer than 10 minutes, I warn my clients that they're gonna probably have an interesting poop. And it's so interesting that, our, that emotional crap is tied to physical crap. Because if you don't warn them of this, some of your clients may never return your phone calls. They may never wanna come back to you. They're gonna be like, oh my word. I went and saw Timor. I had explosive diarrhea for a week. I'm never going back there. He did something to me. But if you warn them ahead of time and say, hey, you may have an interesting poop, you know, and then Audrey's phone starts ringing off the hook and they're like, oh my God, you said I was gonna have an interesting poop? I had seven of them, you know, all within 24 hours. I had one client reach out to me. He said, Fernando, you said I'd have an interesting poop. It's been five days now. I go, that is so awesome. You know, so spin it. You gotta make it out to be a good thing because if you don't warn them ahead of time, they're gonna hate you. Okay, so the zap, it's gone through all six of the, the tabs. We're gonna go back up to TMJ again and click scan and treat page. Okay. Scan and treat page is what we're clicking on. Option number two. Now the reason why we click scan and treat page was so that this button would turn on. So I, I like to click on the first tab. We see the foci here around my cheek and we'll do scan and treat. And you're gonna do this on all six of the tabs up here until the foci are gone. And then when you've done all six of these and the foci are all gone, you're gonna come up to TMJ and do scan total a second time. And you're gonna keep repeating this process until you do scan total and there's no foci showing up. The re and what's interesting is, is the more you do this, the foci start changing shape because you will get, as you go deeper into the onion that is our head, you will get to the stinkier foci. And so they start changing shapes. And so just keep repeating it until all the foci are gone. And for the first time you run this with a new client, it may take seven passes. And then the next time maybe two, uh, two, the next one may be five. So I do hands-on cranial sacral. And sometimes I can literally feel the energy being stagnant, but I just gotta sit there and be patient, stay grounded as I'm doing a hold, whether it's on their head or another part of their body where they had an injury. And then all of a sudden, you'll feel the energy start to move. And it may have been a, about 15 minutes I was waiting. But it's, it, it's so, so cool. I just wish this particular panel with the TMJ would actually be able to work on the whole body at once. Uh, I like the cranial sacral panel, but I love this one because of how you can literally feel it working. So just, you just keep clicking scan and treat until the foci goes away. Keep clicking it, keep clicking it. And, and the trick is, is with this particular panel, I hope you're not colorblind because you gotta see that red. You need to see the red foci 
And sometimes the red foci isn't an obvious oval or an obvious square. Sometimes it's a line. Sometimes it's a, yeah, it's a dot, and it's a dot near a stinking shadow. And if you're rushing, you're not going to notice that there was a dot there and you moved on. So that's why I get on practitioners all the time. Make sure when you're running a session, you keep your why pure so that you're not checking email, you're not checking Facebook, you're not shopping, you're not, you know, that's, because some people do that. So that's finally done. We see the one there. <coughs> Have fun with the TMJ. So after today, you're all experts in the dental panel. You're all experts in DGENs. In I, no, I haven't, I'm not going to do that one. Okay. Okay, hold on. Mary had her hand first. So, so Mary, Mary's saying she has a client that's got a bilateral TMJ replacement, so actual titanium in the jaw. Um, I, I would still run it, but I, I, I always communicate with my client. You need to tell me if anything gets uncomfortable during the session. Don't hold it in. Uh, I've had clients that have held it in, and afterwards they've got blisters on their ankles. They're bleeding on their forehead. They've got a, a hole burned into their shin because they didn't want to interrupt me during the session. So I emphasize now, like crazy, talk to me. Don't, if anything gets uncomfortable, nothing is meant to be uncomfortable. Uh, you know, uh, so just make sure to communicate with me. But when it comes to working in dental and the TMJ, it's, it's all about balancing, but they may feel, I will tell you me personally, one during one session, I felt a pressure building in my shoulder to the point where it was getting so uncomfortable and then I heard a pop and my age went and then went, all that energy that was building up actually went away and that was that was powerful uh, so you can say the same thing with your client if it gets uncomfortable I'll stop I can stop I can stop but uh, and you know just but you can also do preparatory sessions where everything else you know because maybe this is being inflamed by another part of their body and that might be something else that can help out so give it a whirl yeah Timur Yes, so af after you've gone through all six tabs and you've cleared all the reds, come back up here and do it again. Because, because you're going to keep doing that until you do scan total and there's no reds. And again, it might take up to seven, eight passes on the first appointment. Seven to eight, so you spend about almost 12 minutes in here, but it's worth it. And uh, so, okay. Yes, yes, I redo scan total, yes. Everyone else, everyone good? You're all experts now, you're welcome. Okay, now let's have fun in NLP. You guys have been in here a bunch over the last couple days. We have a half hour left, so I'm gonna make sure this half hour is jam packified. With the Mandalay software, our NLP panel is insane. Now, the therapies panel list is still the same, but we now have five pull downs of AFE pulses. They're, this is bonkers. I love it. I love AFE pulses. Some people are like, oh, there's such, such subspace. I like them. We even got the stinking superpowers one. You moms already have superpowers anyways, but our guys, we need them. You know, guys are like moms, we're just better. But anyways, the superpowers is a really good one to have. So, <laughs> as we think about reasons why people are coming to us, I just, these are ones I run the most. You guys, we all attract different kinds of clients. I will tell you that the clients I attract most uh, is our rape victims, abuse victims. Those are who I attract the most. And I spent a lot of time in this panel helping them to move past uh, the things that are holding them back in life. Um, we did one webinar a couple years ago. We call it, it's called Stress and Trauma. Three and a half hours just in this panel. I love this panel. So anger one and two, build up self-image. 
Reduce sadness, the grief assist. When, when, you're, when you're doing those degens and you click on start and it's working towards 100, in the bottom left of there, you'll get the little messages. Deal with anger, deal with recklessness. One of my clients, I've been getting deal with sexuality a lot lately. So I ran a session on him the other day and I did join hemispheres to tr know true self. So uh, what else? Anxiety, worry, the stimulate emotional growth, the, the defense mechanisms. One statistic that I learned was 92% of our clients are walking in the door with heart walls. They have so many shields up. All these shields are blocking our sessions from being effective. So a big thing is as you're talking with your clients and you're noticing things, um, Freddie made the comment yesterday uh, about, uh, don't be frustrated if your client lies to you. If you ask them something that you see in the software, they might lie to you, especially even if they're related to you. They don't want to talk about it right now. But maybe over, over a period of time, it, it, it'll, it'll work. And then uh, I see in the, when, the C, when the DGEN is running, deal with fear a lot with people. People are afraid of everything. It's not, you know, can I pay my rent this month? Can, can I pay for my car repair? Is, you know, my spouse, my job, my kids. So many people are afraid of being bad parents. So we can do treat fear right here. I, lo I love the unconscious choice, but to me, if I'm working on a client and I'm working here in the therapies pull down, I find that if I do unconscious choice, generally whatever it says will rectify in one or two clicks. To me, that was a nice thing to run, but I want to find the thing that takes five to seven clicks. If it takes five to seven clicks, that's what needed to be worked on. So we're investigators besides coaches. We need to figure out what they're not telling us and things like that. So um, over the last couple of days, suicide's been coming up. Uh, some of you have had to deal with clients like that. So if you click unconscious choice and stabilize Thanatos is recommended, if you see stabilized Thanatos here or in biofeedback panel, then you're, afterwards I definitely say to your client, are you, have you been thinking about hurting yourself? And you, you may be that faucet that needed to be opened that someone finally noticed or someone can talk to them about something. Because uh, that stabilized Thanatos could be a huge one for you to open up a conversation with them. Huh? They just wish they were dead. They're working themselves to death. If, if they're overworked. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so some of them don't want to, maybe don't want to get out of bed in the morning. And they're, uh, they're just, they hate their job. Yeah. They, you know, yeah, that's interesting. Self-destruction. Do oh, I do all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to find the one, uh, yeah, I want to find, so the question was, do I do all seven in one session? Holy cow. I'm going to go back to my fan. I'm sitting down, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, that's neat. So if you do all seven, it's hitting all five of the elements. See, I'm smarter than I thought I was. Now, under the uh, static small band therapies, all the new pulses, we have the different Selfeggio tones in there. And if you're kind of, what's nice with all these, with all the AFE pulses, there's unconscious choice down here. But my favorite frequency anywhere in the software is 528. So 528's the love frequency, and I'm the Latin lover, so I gotta like that one. It's the miracle frequency, it's the DNA repair frequency. No, some people have said that. I, th this is right here in NLP, so. Um, you know, I haven't talked to them about that. I, whether I, It's in the main panel, so I would definitely say that these AFE pulses are right through the harness. Yeah, I hope so. That, that's my intention, that's my belief, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. No, that, those all, any AFE pulse that's running will tie up the main panel. So uh, it's, so 
but, but, but they're good, because if you run a pulse, okay, if you're gonna run any of those AFE pulses, you click start, if it gets to 130 seconds, that was nice, but that's not the one they needed. So the trick is, is to find the one that they, they need you to run, and it takes a long time. If it takes 10 minutes to get to 100, dang, you picked the right thing. Hold on a second. So for those of you, I just wanted to show the different pulses here. So for those of you that aren't used to using these, one of the cool ones that some people have been getting excited about, there's tinnitus down here, or tinnitus ringing in the ears. Just as a hint, if you have clients dealing with tinnitus, work on the kidneys first. If, if, you're, if your client is having kidney dysfunction, the body makes tinnitus happen to get your attention. Under the new GSR, TDCs, QRB, AFEs. <laughs> they gotta love me in the interpretation on that one. A fun one in there is Lyme. Lyme, there's a Lyme zap in there now. And then there's the Vegas one. If you have any students in, in, in your life, there's so many great students ones in here. Super learning. Uh, what else? Hold on. Uh, it's, all, it's a different order. Down here, we got the super learning memory storage, and then there's uh, the, the mathematics super learning. Here's a really big one that you can run on your spouse. Insight, intellect, development, Janusian. Janusian is so you can see both sides of the argument. If you, if you have any clients that are always, I'm, it's my way or the highway, run Janusian on them. And again, with the superpowers, lots of great stuff. I want to know how anti-aging is a superpower. If I can hug you guys and make you look younger, I would love that superpower. And then we, we went about those, and then here's the, these as well. There's so many great allergy ones in here. Uh, the other day, we spent all that time going through the allergy panel. So I hope you guys are all, those, those that were there, you're all pa experts in the allergy panel now. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead, Charlotte. Oh, so her question was, well, basically, what's more effective, doing super learning here or super learning in time cybernetic super learning? Uh, and then there's also the different things you can do in, uh, in disease dictionary, like learning disability and things like that. I would do them all, because each panel's got its own algorithm. So get the issue from multiple directions. You know, think about people as pie slices. You know, you gotta get, you know, keep getting it from all the different directions. That's actually, so her question was, you know, like going back to tinnitus, we got tinnitus in disease dictionary, but we got tinnitus in here, is tinnitus maybe an emotional thing? Um, that's actually a, can be a, a hammer issue where people have also caused themselves tinnitus because they don't want to hear the person. Like if, if the tinnitus is in one of their ears, like for instance, my tinnitus started in my right ear after an ear injury, an ear infection, and I, I, it wasn't going away. What's so funny is, is when we're sitting in the, our living room or we're in bed, my wife is always on my right. And it was always my right ear. How interesting is that? So, yeah. Now, Gail was in here earlier in the brain scan panel. Are you guys all comfortable in this panel? Did you guys? So pay attention. When, when you're in spinal and you go to time treatments and, and you see a red on a brain part, you know, like for instance, limbic system. If, if, and you come in here and you want to work on limbic system in here too, what happens if limb, limbic system takes like seven clicks before it rectifies? If you look up what limbic system is tied to, is anger. So how interesting how it comes back full circle. If there's a part of their brain that, you know, so I love the brain scan panel. Now, 
So take advantage of it. Now, one of the things that was kind of interesting for me to figure out was when you're in brain scan, which rectification do you go by? And when you come in here, that hidden way from time cybernetic superlearning that Freddie showed yesterday, it only shows the red rectification, so that's the one I go by now. Uh, so just as a tip, when I'm in here, you know, like if you do temporal lobe and, and you just keep clicking on that till it rectifies to 100, I, I go by the red. And it's funny, I have found that if, if I went by the yellow, it's done in one or two clicks but the red can take like 10 clicks before it gets done. So I like to go deeper that way. Okay, let's move on to something really exciting. How many of you like to use the unconscious react react reactivity panel? Okay, hopefully after this, you're gonna like it even more. I love this panel. And Gail went into this a little bit earlier this panel will tell you everything to the, t to the day of conception with your client. So I love this panel to me is because we're human beings that record memory at conception. And this panel proves this. So if you ever run a session on somebody and it shows you day zero, zero as one of the choices, that's conception. So have fun in here. So I want to show you guys a neat trick in here, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun in here. So normally, when we come into unconscious reactivity, we just click here on this button. But what I recommend that you do is you come in through mental factors. When you click on mental factors, now you can click on unconscious reactivity. There's a really important reason why, and I'll show you in a sec. So how old am I today? Forty-seven. So I'm going to put my age in. Some people, you can test till this age. You know, maybe a lot of your clients' trauma was before they were five, so you just do to five. I prefer to focus on their age now. So I, I, I put in my age. Okay, so we get some, some results. No trauma detected this time. Yay! Emotional conflict friends. I hate them. So, so when it comes to the blue choices here, what I do is I do a, a snip immediately right now. And then I'll do treat emotional profile above. When it comes to these blue results, they're tied to these two buttons. Emotional profile above does a one minute zap. But if you choose to do the other button, you can change the timer so that it can go further. So that's what the differences are between those two buttons. So I usually just do treat emotional profile above as many times as it takes until I get to a rectification of 100. Now here's where it gets fun. Or when it gets there, then it'll be fun. So the question was, is I came in through the mental factors panel, and then there's the white box right there, but I didn't do value of emotions or value of neurotransmitters, so I didn't double click on anything. So no, those haven't been into, taken into account yet, but there's a reason, I, I, I did this on purpose. Okay, so we, we did the zap. Let's just pretend it got to 100. I'm gonna go ahead and click on disease type, and I prefer only to check one of the filter boxes over here. So I'm just gonna pick, uh, since we, what, which one do I wanna pick? What my immune system was coming up on me as my number one. So let's just do infection and we'll do immune weakness over there. And I'm gonna put it over here in the white box also. You see what I did there? So right here, we, in the white box, we got immune weakness, I got it over here. So what, what I call these, these are filters. So, I, so instead of just doing this and this, because we came in through the mental factors box, it gave us an extra white filter box to type into. Now we can go ahead and click disease path. And you see how it covered over that, that white box in, in mental factors? So that's why you gotta make sure to type in there before you do disease path. What 
No, you, you, don't, you don't. So her question was, you have to type it, type it in before you go on contrary activity. No, um, I'm not, so I didn't do emotions or neuro. Yeah, it was since we're doing a stack up, it is it is including it. So so it actually actually is including it, even though yeah. So yeah, it works out good that way. Okay, so let's go here. Now the reason why I did treat emotional profile above before I did disease type is I wanted to work on what was there, and now we have new things have joined in. Sometimes things get replaced after you do treat emotional profile above until it rectifies. So that's why I like to do it. Uh, before and after disease type. So at this time, I would do treat emotional profile above again until all of these rectify. Or, and what's nice is up here is you're working on all, blue, all the blues that are up in the top section at one time. It's, it's, a, it's a clump. I, and, and me personally, since I use this panel so much with my kind of clients, <clears throat> I get excited when I have enough results that pass this line. If I get to this line right here, I know I'm gonna be in here about 15 minutes minimum. What gets really exciting is you know you picked the best filter choices possible is because the blue lines go off the screen and you have to keep hitting widen panel to, to view pathway. And I've had it literally with a client where I have, to, I have to click widen panel until the whole screen goes across. I have to close the green box because there's so many stinking choices that are there. So that can be really exciting and you know you're gonna have some work ahead of you. And again, remember, if you're in here more than 10 minutes, you have gotta warn them about that interesting poop. Okay, so up here, you work on all these blues all together. They're tied to these two buttons and you get your rectification. Now down here, with these blues, they're all individual. So I would work on just top to bottom, left to right. So gestation week 32 would be number one. And you know, you can try to talk with your client. Do they, did anything happen to them when their mom was eight, week, eight months pregnant with them? Uh, and with the one that Gail brought up earlier with unwanted child, if you know that your client was adopted and you are in here, to, trying to work on psychological stuff, maybe abandonment stuff, you will probably find out at what gestation week the mother decided to not keep her baby. And so that can be, when you're doing stuff in here, you guys need to be prepared not only to warn them about maybe having interesting poop, but I also will, if I worked on some really deep stuff, I'll warn them they may have some emotional detoxing. So they need to warn their family, you know, kind of maybe give me some space you know, tell them to stay as hydrated as possible, but you don't want them going home biting off their spouse's head, biting off their children's head, maybe going back to work and biting off their employees' heads or fellow coworkers. And, and, and it's, you know, you didn't really do a bad thing. You're helping them move in the release of this stuff. And the next day, they may feel absolutely amazing. But that first day, there could be an emotional detox. So right there, you guys, we did gestation week 32 and just keep going until it rectifies to 100, then move on to childhood age six. Let me come here to the uh, uh, PowerPoint so I can show you something. One age at a time. They're individuals. Okay, and if you put a timer, not the, the timer is connected to the top blues, but. Right, because yeah, when, when you do the, this treat emotional profile above, it's just a one minute, 45 second to one minute zap working on these. The treat profile at time is set to this, so you know, let's say, like with one of my clients, some uh, age, four, age 14 came up, and so I, I'll ask them, so what, did something happen at age 14? You don't have to tell me what it was, but did something happen? Oh yeah, I was raped. So knowing that I did a one minute zap and I got a rectification of 100, is that really gonna help them move past a rape that was at 14? No, they might need a little bit more time set on the side. Right here, 
whenever you're running something in that red box, that red box is actually an alarm. Gail talked about it earlier where you can see bargaining, we can see uh, denial. I find that most of my clients are Egyptian because they're all living in denial. But, uh, but just knowing that when, the, when messages come up down here in the red, those are alarms. You can actually double click on that red box to make it clear. If I click on it and it says alarm, no more therapy, I'm gonna keep moving on. I'll keep, I mean, I, I keep doing what I'm doing. Where I, get, where I start paying extra attention though is when in the, the red boxes start giving me this messages. So these are just little screenshots so you guys can see what I'm talking about. If I get an alarm response, I'm gonna double click on it and keep going. But I, I, I take notes when I'm in here. I call this the ages panel and I wanna know where I got alarms and things like that. So if I get an alarm response, I'm gonna double click on it and move on and keep doing the zaps. If I get a small alarm response, I make note of it and I keep going with the session. But when I get a, an extreme alarm response, now I have to pay attention. The reason why is if I get one al extreme alarm and I double click on it and then continue on with the zap, you can keep continuing, but if I get a second extreme alarm, I'm done in NLP. The reason why is, is once you get two extreme alarms in NLP, everything after that is an extreme alarm. And if you decide to keep going, you'll start getting messages, be cautious, you know, be careful. You know, there's other things will start popping up, letting you know that you're being stupid. So when I get to two extreme alarms, I'm done in NLP, and I just make notes of how far I got, and I just know I'm gonna probably pick all the same filters that I picked and come back and see how much less things actually show up so I can keep working on peeling back that onions to get, you know, to see how we can work with our clients. Have fun, but we're not done yet. What? Yeah, the next session. Next session, not on the same day. Correct. So, so yeah, when, when I when I leave, uh, yeah, I'll. So the question was, is do I do I come out? Do I go out of NLP and then come back in the same day? No, no. I'll. It's for the next appointment. So what I do is every session. Uh, I know many people aren't like me, but I take between seven to twenty-five screenshots. So those screenshots you guys saw me doing with the snipping tool. It, depending on who I'm, if it's a new client, it's probably about 25. And then at the end of the appointment, I'm showing my client those screenshots on why they need to come back for X amount of sessions. Some of you weren't here Wednesday for, for my first part of this. I don't let somebody strap up unless they commit to at least four sessions. The period, I, I don't care how far they drove. They, they don't strap up unless they commit to at least four sessions. A lot of my clients that I've worked on have been referrals and they're driving two and a half hours one way and they still come and they still pay my price. So the, it's, it's, it's very serious and, and uh, it's like Debbie was talking about when it comes to some of our clients, uh, you know, feel free to drop clients, even if they're related to you. Uh, you know, they need to be uh, in charge of their wellness, not just having you as the next person they blame that this didn't work. So hold on one sec, because I'm gonna show you a trick. Sure. When anywhere in the panels where I get alarm, no more therapy, whether you're in spinal or any of the sub panels, to me an alarm can be uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they may have to go to bathroom. So if, if I get multiple alarms, I look at them, I'm like, Mary, do you gotta go pee? And, and they're like, how'd you know? And, and you know, cause you're, you're messing with my session. I'll go, so I'll, I'll tell them at the beginning, at any time during the session, I need you to be honest with me. If you gotta go pee, I don't care if there's five minutes left of the session, I'll stop, you run to the bathroom and then come back because I literally can tell by the kind of alarms I'm getting or how zaps are going. If, if like you're in short star codes and a zap that normally takes seven to 10 seconds takes a minute or two, they're holding it. 
or they have no more resources for the session to continue on. So I usually continue on, but I just pay attention and communicate with them. Okay, so let's show you this fun trick. We got the different ages here. Let's close out and close out. We're back to mental factors. Click the button, save emotions to report. Okay. Now here's a really fun thing that that just did for us. Programs to short SAR codes. We were talking about my eye teeth earlier and how eye teeth are tied to the liver. So let's go here to ear plus, et cetera. And let's go pick liver and come over here to shortcut for RX. And then what do you see? You see all the ages? So everything that we just did in the ages panel pulled, pulled over here with us. So now we can go ahead and do load and close. And now not only are we working on the liver, but we're working on all the ages that were being held there and tied to it as well. Do you guys like that? So all we did in NLP was, now you know what though? I can't duplicate it because now I'd have to start all over again. But uh, so mental factors, we did the unconscious reactivity, and then, and then when we're all done with the ages that we were working on, you click save emotions to report. So it's really important that you go in those steps and then you come back to a place. The only place I've really paid the most attention where that shows up is here in short SAR codes. And you know, so to think that we can you know, work on the teeth and just know that maybe, but you see how they're gone now? So the ages are now gone down here at the bottom. So it's when you do that, the emotions from report, and you leave and go to short SAR codes immediately afterwards, you're gonna go so deep. Whether it's TMJ, I will tell you from doing hands-on cranial sacral, most of my clients are women, and you ladies hold emotional pain, emotional trauma in two places the most. One is in the jaw. It's because you, one of the, in the US we have a, com, a, 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 a saying where you bite your tongue. Do they say that here in Europe where you bite your tongue? So where you wanted to say something but you bit your tongue and you held it in, every time that you held it in and bit your tongue, you imprinted that argument into your jaw. And so as we get older and our jaw starts getting tighter and tighter and we start having chronic pain in our jaw, it's all those times you bit your tongue. So that is why I love the dental panel and TMJ panels. Yeah, Marta. So for people that, have, that like chatter their teeth or grind their teeth at night, just work in the dental panel, but for maybe, but when we went into the filters and NLP and the ages panel, Maybe put in there, teeth grinding. I believe it's very Because then sometimes it could be parasites. Because what's actually interesting, yeah, we have a whole webinar on, on how parasites can be in there. But you guys, try this out. Do the ages, do your save emotions to report. Come immediately to short SAR codes and make sure whatever you pick, you're doing shortcut for RX load and close so you've got all those ages. And if you come here immediately afterwards and anything you do in here, and any of these panels will all be showing those in there. And honestly, for me, I've, we've proven that if you switch from lymph, you know, say you do lymph, I'll do load and close and do it to 100. And then if I say switch over to stomach, I come back up here again to shortcut for RX and do load and close and I'll do it to 100. I do it each and every time. The reason why is because we've proven, so I, I, we were all taught for, for years, just do it once and done. But I had another practitioner say, no, I've, she says do it each time. So it's, to me it's worth the three seconds. So what I did was is I started doing screenshots and printing them out and sitting there with a highlighter and finding out that each, that, that sometimes, 70% of the time, all different stuff keeps loading. Because you're, every zap you do, you're, you're rebalancing. 
you're de-stressing. So different piggybacks are now gonna, you're peeling another layer of the onion. So to me, it's been huge. And guess what? If, you, if, if your dog loses their mind, every time you go to work, you can support your dogs in here, weather emotions and short star codes. If, you're, if, you're, if your llama is really sad when you leave, you can support your llama in here. It, I, I will tell you guys though, honestly with the Mandalay software, not all the animal panels are working properly yet. I did bring that to their attention. However, here in short star codes, if you're working on your favorite turtle, your favorite bird, those wretched demonic cats, cows, horses, you know. So that you can work on all those different animals here. Uh, you can even work on bees in here. Uh, but in short star codes, all the panel animal stuff is working. But in body viewer, it's not, and nor is it completely working in the spinal panel in animal reactions. Okay, let's keep going. You guys are all experts at that panel. You're welcome. No, right now they're not showing up in Body Viewer. All the different animal choice. So yeah, in Body Viewer, when after the AFV autofocus pull down, there if you if in demographics if you selected an animal, normally there's animal choices. Right now it's not showing up in the software. So I let them know about that. Okay, guys, we are at slide 46 of 63. Hold on, we've got 15 minutes left. I think. I think metal factors, the therapy here has been talked about a lot uh, these last couple days. I'm just going to add one extra comment and I'm going to move on. I do before and after screenshots when I come into metal factors or neurotrans, not really of neurotransmitters unless it's crazy, but mostly of metal factors with the emotions one. And a lot of us were taught the one thing when we came in here and that's to bottom and top balance, right? Everyone just is pretty much always taught that. Since so many of my clients are dealing with emotional stuff, uh, I, I don't do that. I, so for instance, in this particular client, we see the highest is 102, we see a 101. So instead of just doing bottom and top balance, we see how low down it goes, I would actually start off doing treat all below 60 until it rectifies. And since my main reason for being in this panel is to get it to balance, to retrain, I'm, I'm not here looking for shortcuts. So if it takes a bit, it, it can take a bit. But also, you guys were asking me the other day, you know, I get really, I prefer my clients to be asleep during a session because the rectifications go so much smoother. But there's those times when they, they look over at me, they see my face. Why are you making that face, Fernando? I look at them, I say, why are you awake? Go back to sleep. But uh, so in here, I, I want to try to figure out what's going on. But you may choose to talk to them during it. After being married for as long as I have, I know talking does make, it makes sense. It can be part of healing. Just hate to do it, right, guys? So do treat all below 60 until it rectifies. And then what's so cool is what some of you don't notice is when you're in here and you're in here for a, a bit of time, when you come in here and do bottom and top balance and you, and, and you do it maybe one, two or three times and then you leave, you weren't in here long enough to watch the graph get smaller. And what happens is, is as the graph is getting smaller, the picture actually zooms in. So some of you aren't noticing that it's actually getting smaller because the graph still looks the same size but the panel actually lets zooms in as things are getting better. So I love it when you start watching it turn from an amusement park roller coaster to looking more balanced across the middle and then you get to see where the true peak and valley is. And then I'll go, okay, the ones that are at the top still haven't gone anywhere so maybe I'll do tree top three or I'll do tree all above 100 until it rectifies. And then maybe there's some sticklers down at the bottom and they're not coming up like I want them. So I'll do treat bottom three. So, and then maybe before I leave, if I have time, because at this point I maybe have been in here 25 minutes, then I'll do bottom and top balance. What's really nice is, is when you're in here, neurotransmitters is actually getting worked on at the same time. So let's say you spend a lot of time 
in mental f in emotions and you're like, oh, I still need time for neurotransmitters. If you come over to neurotransmitters and it's at 100 already, you're done because they actually work simultaneously. That was actually an interesting thing if we figured out back around April or May. So give it a whirl and see if you guys can have, by doing it a different way, see if you guys have more effective sessions. Okay, have fun in, NL, in nutrition. As an extra tip in nutrition, I find a lot of you are not using the search box here where you can type in something. Like say you type in anger and when you start typing in here, a button turns on where it'll be like, was it search disease or some search or something? Anyways, when you click on it, it'll give you choices down here in the yellow and you can work on those so they rectify. So take advantage of seeing how you can use this panel better. Now here's a tip though that I had an aha moment last year. I love and I never ever skip in a session running the Nutri's Enzyme Horm Stabilize Pulse. That's where you click on that, the box opens up, you click start and you let it go to 100 and you click end. I find almost every client possible is imbalanced in nutrition, enzymes and hormones. Right? Did you guys admit, say that too? Yeah. Did you have a question, Timur? So do we want to use these down here? It, so do we do these four down here or is this enough? For me, in most cases, the pulse is enough. The AFE pulse is enough. However, if I need it to be more of a focus session where there, you know for a fact there's hormone imbalance or, or you guys want to get creative like Adam did at the Beijing Olympics with the swim team where they turn that team into a, a, a medal winning team, that's where you're gonna use the stimulate hormone here and in sports program. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys something to think about. So I love Nutri slash Enzyme slash Horm Stabilize. That is an amazing pulse. I recommend all of you that work on women to have a question on your intake form. Are you currently taking medication that affects your hormones? Because if you're stabilizing their hormones and they're on birth control and your client gets pregnant, who are they mad at? You, the practitioner. So you need to know that when you're working on your clients, that if they're taking medication that's affecting their hormones for a specific reason, like not getting pregnant, then you may choose to skip certain panels or certain buttons or certain options. So just keep that in mind. That was, uh, that happened to a practitioner in the United States last year. And as we were talking about what would have allowed that to happen and the legal trouble she started getting into, I had to kind of re -change, how, or change around how I was doing sessions. So I just wanted to warn you guys about that. That can be huge. Yes? What's, a, what's the HRT? Oh, for, for the most part, you know what's funny is, uh, at 42, my wife started to have, uh, started to go through menopause. And I go, Tara, that's not normal. That's, no, I, I need, we need to balance out your hormones so that, because that's not normal. I did that in one session and she had her period back for the next six months and I was in the doghouse for six months. She said, stop working on my hormones. <sighs> well, okay. So, when, generally, Women that are on hormone replacements, it's because, sadly, in our cultures, menopause is such a, a part of the conversation. Do you guys know that in Japan, they don't even have a word for menopause? So in some of these countries, they don't have a word for it because they have normal horm hormone function until they die. But if a woman in Japan goes to the United States for a period and then goes back, she can have menopause because the conversation in U.S., is about menopause or maybe around here too. So just be mindful. For some, a situation like that, they're there about hormone regulation. They're taking that medication to help them with it. So stabilizing and helping them out might not be a bad thing, but tell them if, if you're in doubt, you know, maybe get a permission slip from their, their medical professional uh, just so that you feel like your butt's a little more covered. Yes, Timur. How can a female what? How, how can, what's the signature of pregnancy? Where do you need to go? 
Oh, so how, when you're in the software, how can you tell if your client's pregnant? Yeah. And, they, and if they don't know it? Yes. Because the software will tell you, be careful though, your client's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Generally, that, that's a pop-up that shows up in the software. Be careful. So that's, but you can also go into the acupuncture panel. And, and, and if, the hard thing about, the, about in acupuncture is that when, when you're working on a woman that is of an age where she can have a period, there'll be a button here that says pregnancy possibility. That button can be misleading because you can click on it and get a yes, but she may have just had her period. So she, her ability to possibly get pregnant is actually there, but it was because of more the fact that she's able to get pregnant, not that she is pregnant. Uh, how is this software to distinguish between a parasite and a, and a pregnancy? I, I, I love the delay in interpretation. <laughs> it's just so... Uh, I don't know. I, that's a good question. I, since I, hmm, that's a good one. Okay, guys, I got it. I got four, four and a half minutes. I want to teach you one or two more fun things, and then I'm going to wrap up. You guys have been a great crowd. So Gail showed you earlier. I, I'm all about every possible place in the software to find these little secrets about our client. Um, on, my, on our tour this year, we went into the covert panel. So I'm, I don't have time to do that now because that covert panel to me is such a huge tool. But I love here in sports program, when you do sports super conscious report and you click on that, you get the message that Gail showed you earlier. So what, what I'm about to show you now is a collage of screenshots to, so you can see a, other kind of messages that show up. What I'm about to show you is not a panel in the software, so don't ask me but they're screenshots. So, not this one. So we get the message right up here. And those are all different things that you can see show up in the software. And, and again, the BS one, sorry for the profanity, but that's in the software. But these little messages that are keeping your clients from having wellness in their lives are such a neat thing for us to know about them. So have fun, I hope you guys like that one. And then I never close out a session without coming into body scan face therapy and doing the aura cleanse until all the circles fill with color. I know so many people don't just do it for an X amount of clicks, but my goal when I'm done with a session is they're sitting there stewing in all this energy that they've released during the session. And it's so important not to skip this step so that until, just keep clicking retest okay until all the rings fill with color and then you'll be done. So thank you guys.